Hello friends, welcome back. So friends, in this video, we'll prepare that schedule. Okay, so where we left in the last video. So as you can see, uh, in this debt schedule, uh, we have a format of the debt schedule. Okay, where we have opening balance of the debt, debt to be raised during the month, debt to be repaid during the month, and the closing balance. Okay, on the basis of this debt balance. I'll calculate my monthly interest expense on the basis of rate of interest. Okay, so let's do that. <clears throat> Friends, opening balance of the zero month, obviously it would be zero. Okay, debt to be raised. So let's check the assumption sheet. I can see under the financing assumptions, we are using that only to fund my operational capex. That too, to the extent of 50%. Okay, so whatever my operational expense would be, 50% of it will be funded through debt. This is my debt raised assumption. Okay, so let's link my debt raised in the schedule, debt schedule. I can just put formula here equal to operational capex. I can go to the cash inflow outflow tab. There I have already done projection of operational capex. This is my operational capex. I can link from the zero month. Okay into my assumption 50% I'm funding 50% of my debt uh, operational capex through debt now I can freeze of assumption d25 I can freeze both rows and column and not to freeze this operational capex okay now you can drag this you can drag this for all 48 months so it will automatically stop where I'm ending my where I'm stopping my operational capex so you can see I'm raising debt up to month 24 because this is my tenure of operational capex okay so this is my debt raised I'm done with the debt raised now debt repaid when I'll start paying off debt so what they are saying as per assumption sheet if you remember the debt repayment will start they're saying that the debt repayment will start so that will be paid off using we'll use proceeds from the sales so when we'll start selling this project okay so we'll use sales proceeds to pay off my debt okay now coming back to debt schedule so this is my opening this is my debt raised repaid i link you know so i first have to link interest expense and whatever balance will be left after paying interest expense from the sales proceed will be used to repay debt okay so before repaying debt i'll first calculate interest expense okay so i link this debt repaid later on before that let me calculate closing balance closing balance would be opening balance of the debt plus debt raised minus debt repaid okay though debt repaid we have not linked it but i'll put the formula okay so when i link this debt repaid it will automatically update this is my closing balance of the debt and now this closing will become opening for the next month so link this closing to the next month opening and copy this copy this formula for all 48 months and also copy this closing balance formula for all 48 months so friends you can see i'm done with my debt schedule except debt repaid this part is not yet calculated okay though my model is interlinked so the moment i calculate this debt repaid link this debt repaid my model will automatically update my balances will automatically update now let's calculate interest expense because we need interest payment first to calculate how much fund we are left to repay debt okay without calculation of interest expense we cannot calculate net cash flows we are left with to pay off debt okay so interest payment for that we need a rate of interest let's link rate of interest from the assumption sheet which is seven percent but this seven percent is on the annual basis okay this is the yearly interest rate okay so i need to convert this on the monthly interest rate so monthly interest rate would be what annual interest rate divided by 12 0.58 percent 
on monthly basis i'm supposed to pay 0.58 percent interest on my total debt okay total debt outstanding during the month now interest payment part friends we are assuming in case we are paying any debt during the month this repayment will be done at the end of the month it means in a particular month you are supposed to pay interest on your opening balance as well as total debt raised as we are assuming debt raised is happening at the beginning of the month at the start of the month and if you are pay, repaying any debt this is happening at the end of the month okay so during the month what amount will be outstanding your opening balance outstanding at the start of the month whatever you had a balance plus the amount you are raising during the month which we are assuming at the start of the month and in case you are repaying any amount that is repaid at the end of the month so you are supposed to pay interest for this particular month for the entire amount of debt opening plus debt raised okay this i am assuming guys why i am assuming that debt repaid is happening at the end of the month to avoid circular reference otherwise these numbers would be interdependent debt repayment is dependent upon the interest expense interest expense will be dependent upon your debt repayment okay so to avoid circular reference we are assuming that debt raising is happening at the end start of the month and repayment of the debt is happening at the end of the month so interest expense would be sum of opening balance of the debt and debt raised sum of both okay into rate of interest okay and now in this i'll freeze rate of interest and copy this this formula for all 48 months so i got i got my interest expense though this interest expense will change when you will link this debt repayment okay so this interest expense i'll link to my cash inflow outflow tab okay now please come to the inflow outflow tab and you can see cash flows to the firm from this cash inflow outflow to the firm i'll first pay interest expense okay so let's link interest expense from the input tab and as cash interest expenses cash outflow i link this with the negative sign i'll put minus sign there and i link this cash inflow uh, sorry interest expense interest payment this should come negative in negative sign that's why i prefix negative sign minus sign there and copy this so i got my interest payments there you can see they are coming in negative sign minus sign because it's a cash outflow now friends net cash flows after interest expense okay which we can use to pay off debt okay so net interest expense would be uh, net cash flows would be sorry cash flows to the firm okay plus interest expense and why i'm using plus sign because this is interest expense is into minus so when you will plus then both these numbers interest expense will be automatically adjusted it will be deducted okay so sum of cash flows to the firm and interest expenses and you can copy this i got my net cash flows before raising or repayment of debt before we raise any debt or repay any debt okay so friends now debt to be raised debt to be raised i can directly link this debt raised from debt schedule okay i can link from debt schedule or oh, should be linked with month zero which is nil and if you drag this i got my debt raised uh, i linked my debt raised okay you can see i'm raising this debt up to month 24 right this is the last month of operational uh, capex and we are using debt to fund my operational capex okay then debt to be repaid so as per assumption sheet we will be we will repay debt from the proceeds of the sales right and sales will start from month 24 
So basically, guys, you will start getting positive cash flows here only from the month when you have sales, right? So can we put formula here? Like when you have a positive cash flows here, we'll pay off this amount, we'll pay off debt with this amount, okay? So we'll use this positive cash flows, net cash flows to pay off my debt, right? So debt to be repaid. Debt to be repaid, let's come back to debt schedule. Let's calculate debt to be repaid, okay? Debt repayment. I'll say, I'll put a condition here, if, If net cash flows, okay, if net cash flows is greater than zero, if we have a positive cash flows left after payment, uh, you know, after, after the payment of interest, then how much debt we will repay? We will repay total balance of debt outstanding, right, at the beginning of the month or cash flows we have minimum of both friends i'm explaining this again first of all when we will repay debt when we have positive cash flows the condition number one this cell should be greater than zero this net cash flows after interest expense should be greater than zero okay if we have greater than zero if we have positive cash flows here then i'll use this cash flow to pay off my debt then how much debt i'll pay pay off balance outstanding or cash flows we have here positive cash flows we have here because if the balance outstanding is less than the positive cash flows you will repay to the extent of outstanding amount right or if the positive cash flow is less and the outstanding amount is more you can pay to the extent of cash flows available so the formula should be here what should be formula here i'll say first condition if first you have to meet this condition right if you have a positive cash flows if this cash flow is greater than zero then what you need to repay how much debt we can repay minimum of this positive cash flow right in case we have positive cash flow then only it will go to this this calculation otherwise condition is not met it will pick zero right so if you have a positive cash flows minimum of the cash flows we have or the debt outstanding we have at the starting of the month whichever is lower so if the condition is satisfied give me this calculation give me the minimum of positive cash flows or debt outstanding otherwise zero i'll not be able to repay my debt because i don't have any positive cash flows right now friends in this equation in this uh, formula of e19 nothing to freeze E19 again nothing to freeze F5 nothing to freeze so we need not to freeze anything in this formula and you just need to copy this that's it okay and you can see we'll start repayment of debt from the month 25th right we had a 4.87 million dollar of cash positive cash balance left here month 25 right you can see here and I'll use this cash because I had a $8 million of debt, but I had a cash of 4.8 cents. So it picked just minimum of both 4.87. In the next month, you can see my total cash uh, available cash was 4.9, but my debt outstanding was just three. So it picked minimum of both 2.63, 2.63. If you expand the decimal point here, let me show you. Let me expand decimal point of the opening balance, right? Alt H zero again Alt H zero okay now you can see guys it was 2.63 2.63 okay so we can hide two decimal points there Alt H nine Alt H nine so we are keeping up to two decimal points and in the last month month 26 right we are reaping the entire debt where is my positive cash balance was 4.9 but my opening debt outstanding was just 2.63 so your formula is working fine it is picking just minimum of outstanding amount or cash balance left right and automatically you can see my interest expense has been updated okay and my debt schedule is complete
okay now i link my debt repayment to the cash outflow so let's debt repayment i'll put minus sign there because repayment is negative for the cash inflows outflows so i'll just put minus sign prefix minus sign and link this number and track this okay and we are done okay so friends you can see we have calculated debt schedule right we have prepared debt schedule on the basis of debt to be raised repaid interest expenses and all now after making adjustment of interest expense debt raised and repaid we can calculate cash flows to the equity holders what cash flows we are left with for the equity so let's see friends we have already calculated cash inflows outflows after interest okay now from this we need to make adjustment of change in debt basically debt raised and repaid so i i'll simply apply some formula here equal to sum net cash inflows outflows after interest expense plus minus debt raised or repaid and if you copy this for all 48 months we got cash inflows outflows for the equity okay after making adjustment for the debt what cash balance we are left with for the equity now friends we first have to pay capital gain tax right so we have to pay capital gain tax then only we will be able to distribute earnings right and as per assumption sheet if you remember capital gain tax is 10% right you can see here the capital gain tax is 10% which will be paid which will be paid at the end of the sales process right in the last month of the sales okay so your sales is ending on uh, in the month 48 okay and you will pay your capital gain tax in the last month so let's let's link capital gain tax guys first of all let's calculate capital gain okay we have to first calculate capital gain and then on that we have to pay capital gain tax so let's calculate capital gain and in the last month because i am paying capital gain tax in the last month only so there is no point you know we calculate this capital gain every month right so let's calculate this in the last month month number 48 sum of cash inflows and outflows this sum will give you net cash balance net profit from this project to the equity holder right the net inflows and outflows okay so the negative is outflow positive is inflow and the net of cash outflow we are left with how much cash uh, capital gain 49.39 49.39 million dollar okay this is my capital gain and the tax on this capital gain is how much will pay tax in the last month and the tax rate is as per assumption sheet 10% so i link this 10% with my capital gain and i got my capital gain tax and guys i'll put minus sign there because this is outflow right this capital gain tax is outflow now friends net cash flows to the equity holders after taxes that would be net cash flows before taxes minus minus capital gain tax so we got net cash flows after tax and we can copy this formula and we got net cash flows to the equity after taxes okay uh, but we need to sorry there is one mistake in the formula reason being we are using minus sign for capital gain tax because which, which is outflow so i should not use minus sign there it should be plus if you use minus sign then so what will happen guys you can see my net cash flow was 4.92 before capital gain tax and the capital gain tax is 4.94 but minus min minus it is it is adding both the numbers okay so we should use just plus sign here because i'm using required sign with the cash inflows and outflows 
so I'll just use plus sign there and copy and we got cash inflows and outflows to the equity holders after taxes okay so we got you can see I got my first requirement of the project what was the first requirement of the project it says we need to calculate deal cash flows so we got deal cash flows you can see we got deal cash flows guys the requirement number one we need to calculate deal cash flows this part is done okay requirement number two deal IRR IRR internal rate of return to the equity holders okay so let's calculate IRR to the equity holders requirement number two deal IRR so how we will calculate IRR to the equity holders let's see friends to calculate IRR we just need cash inflows and outflows you can see we have all cash inflows and outflows in the same row okay inflows should be positive and outflows should be negative okay so we have cash inflows and outflows so friends formula for equity IRR is IRR bracket start now you need to link all the values okay all the values in this array okay just link all the values in positive and negative values comma guess value you can put zero I need a precise calculation here just put zero there that's it so you got your IRR for the equity holders what return they are making on the basis of this cash outflows and inflows okay they are making a return of 1.6 percent and guys this is monthly return because you are doing this calculation on the basis of monthly cash flows you are doing this calculation on the basis of monthly cash flows so you got monthly return here now let's convert this monthly return into annualized IRR okay so let's see how we can convert this to convert this monthly IRR into annualized IRR I cannot simply multiply this with 12 okay we have to use compounding function here let's see how so friends the function to convert your monthly IRR into annual IRR is bracket start 1 plus your monthly return okay bracket close raised to the power 12 because in a year there are 12 months minus 1 outside the bracket okay and you got your yearly IRR 20.9 percent so the formula is very simple 1 plus your monthly IRR close the bracket raised to the power number of months minus 1 that's it so I got 20.9 percent as my yearly IRR from this project okay now friends requirement number three money multiple on the deal so we'll calculate this money multiple on the deal and all other requirements in the next video okay so we are done with requirement number one and requirement number two okay in the next video we'll calculate other requirements of this project